Hello and welcome to Board Now's Cult Rants and on this video I will be reviewing Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 1 Episode 5 and it is called Never Kill a Boy on the First Date and just a couple things to say actually before I make a start on this episode the previous episode um, Teacher's pet, I should have mentioned actually, there's of course a, quite a big scene with Buffy and Angel, and that is when you really get the first sense of their attraction for one another, and he of course gives her his, his, his leather black coat, and you get the old boy line from Buffy, as, as that's the moment she realises she's into this vampire. Um, well, at double take there actually I mean it's not really a spoiler but it sort of is sorry about yeah I boobied there letting the vampire word slip out on the off chance you happen to not know it then angel was you know a demon of the night so but anyway at this point Buffy doesn't know so I'm sorry if I spoiled it for someone there who doesn't know that an angel is a vampire. Um, she's fallen for this person, this thing, let's say. Um, she doesn't know his identity at this point. So that happens in the previous episode. So, you know, it is what it is, but it's, it's obviously the big moment when they first realise they're sort of attracted to each other. Um... And I think I forget forgot to rate the episode probably, which I try to do as I go along. And I've been doing it sort of in stars, so five stars. And um, obviously the first few episodes were were solid, really. Um, pilot ep episode especially. But um, yeah, this one, as you may recall, I was really down on. I think it's probably one of the weakest episodes of the whole show. So... Yeah, I might only give it one star, actually. I could be generous and give it two, but I think I might go with the one. I think it is generally one of the worst episodes of the whole series, although it does have its bright points, as even the worst episodes of Buffy tend to do. So that brings me on to Never Kill a Boy on the First Date. And I have to say, first of all, it it rocks simply for one visual and that is the visual of Buffy in this this really cheesy um, leopard skin um, like tiger hoodie it, it's such a such a playful little shot and and she does look kind of ridiculous but I'm also so into it as well um, I just mark out every time I see it and her just sitting there in the cemetery with this tiger hoodie on and I don't know if it's meant to be a 90s sort of fashion or if it's just a fashion they thought would look cool for the show and that's the thing about the show I think a lot of it a lot of the fashions are things that would have been worn in the 90s but they also have this very distinct look where I think you get the impression then they've just come up with it as part of the characters as something they think will look cool. I mean, Willow, for one, has some really great fashions that really stand out and you think, well, that's just another great character bit for her. In this, I picked up on her really having these cute... Um, like sort of like ponytails but she's got like two of them and um yeah both tied back and yeah just adorable but um she really pulls it off not not many people could but but willow does of course so this is quite a big episode um in the season or quite a big one for buffy as a character personally and I guess in some ways it follows up from her and Angel in the previous episode. So the, so the Master's back in it, played by Mark Metcalf, and it's nice to see him because 
considering he is the big bad for the season he is used quite sparingly he doesn't show up that much in in the first season and um which is a shame because i think he's entertaining when he is used but yeah considering he's the big bad he should have been in more episodes but obviously they had limited amount of episodes but yeah in this season he he has a prophecy and the prophecy is that this this demon will rise from from the ground from the ashes of the dead and the demon is known as the anointed one and the master is confident that this demon who obviously has special powers will be able to form a pact with him and that um, they together will be able to defeat the Slayer. So part of the episode is the mystery of of if the Anointed One will rise and also the, the form that he takes on because he, he, he takes on a human form. Um, but the episode title comes from the fact that Buffy is interested now in dating boys. She's still wants to have a regular social life and and sort of the life of a teenager even though obviously she's got this big call in as the slayer so i think it, it again goes to the theme of the season or one of them the fact that buffy is still dreaming of a regular teenage life and trying to juggle that with her duties as the slayer so she takes an interest in this boy called Owen who shows up for the first time. We've never seen him in a previous episode, which is something that they do a lot in this season. You see characters pop up as one take characters and yet they sort of interact with the Scoobies and the impression is that they know them from around the school. And it's something they move away from in the later seasons. I think in season two, it doesn't really happen or it very rarely happens after that. Um, but yeah, this is just a one shot character. But there's this, in, well, you, you, you sort of, you can tell them Buffy already knows him and she's already spoken to him before. But yeah, Owen, she takes an attraction to this guy, Owen who comes into the library near the start of the episode looking for an Emily Dickerson book. Um, and there's this kind of gag about Buffy suddenly taking an interest in Emily Dickerson and it in books. Um, and obviously it's, it's as a front, it's because she wants to get close to Owen. Um, and the whole plot is then she sort of does go on a date with Owen but at the same time she's trying to protect him from her slayer side um, which is quite a typical sort of plot in these sorts of things and that um, yeah she's trying to keep him safe and, and kind of it's a learning curve for her learning the fact that then, yeah then she, she can't really get outsiders involved or then it's too dangerous and that she she maybe does have to be selective about who she socializes with or or who if she can trust a boy if she can you know have a regular relationship so it is a in these classic things it's it's a learning curve and and it it makes sense to focus on this sort of thing five episodes in and it is a very solid episode, it's very watchable, and it is doing a lot of good character things. Um, but it does have one black hole at the heart of it, and that is, of course, Owen, who is this weird sort of, like, mismatch of a character. You know, he's got these striking good looks, he's kind of dashing, he's, he's a bit of a jock, but... Then he's he's obviously this brooding Emily Dickerson sort of fan, and that that obviously that scene and him talking about her and her poetry is is just so forced and clunky and yeah you, you struggle to believe then 
like a teenager in high school, which he's meant to be, although I think you can see that the actor's probably in his 20s. But, yeah, you, you don't really buy that he, he would be into Emily Dickinson, especially someone who looks like him. And, and the trouble is the character is so inconsistently written because at times he does come across as as just an idiot as as clueless and very naive which is what we see with him and buffy but anyway the actor's not very good and the character is is very very bland and yeah it doesn't really feel like a human being he doesn't really engage with you and it just feels a bit out of the blue i mean obviously in the previous episode we have we had the first hint of intimacy with Angel and Buffy, and now they're sort of throwing this Owen thing at us. And again, I think it's it sort of works for what it does and what it does for Buffy, and that's obviously the crucial thing. It's about her experience, her sort of learning curve. But yeah, at the same time, it would have been better if it was someone more convincing, a better written character than Owen. Yeah, I, I I kind of don't buy that she would be into this guy personally. And yeah, coming on the backs of um, the scene with Angel in the previous episode, it's it's a bit hard to buy. But anyway, Owen is besides him, it's it's a mostly enjoyable episode. I mean, there there are some clunky and contrived moments. I mean, most of them involve Owen, to be fair. Um, so Cordelia also takes an interest in Owen because, of course, and again, it's hard to tell whether the attraction from her is then she naturally finds him attractive or if it's just um, the fact that then she's trying to upstage Buffy again. You know, they do have this rivalry sort of building. And, of course, their paths sort of paralleled because, of course, Buffy at her old school was sort of the equivalent of Cordelia, the sort of it crowd girl. But, you know, I mean, I quite enjoy the rivalry with Buffy and Cordelia and there's some funny moments here but it, it just feels a bit too contrived the fact that she she happens to go after Owen as well I guess it's an excuse to get called either in the episode um but yeah there's all this stuff with Giles um being quite sarcastic with that Buffy and obviously trying to get her to focus on on, on on the prophecy in hand and the fact that the anointed one is supposed to arrive and obviously Buffy's you know being a, a bit of a teenager and wanting to focus on 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 the date and with Owen um, and I really love Giles's line um, the sarcastic line um, where he says something like um, fine I'll just get in a time machine and tell tell the anointed one or, or or the ancient demons that um that the prophecy must be put on hold because you're having dinner and a movie or something it's something like that i i, I butchered that line probably but it's it's the gist of it and um buffy says at this point you're just abused sarcasm and you really get the banter and the chemistry between those between buffy and charles once again and probably the line of the episode is actually Buffy's um, when she when she goes on the date and Joel's trying to stop her and she just says if the apocalypse comes beat me such a cute like um, sparky little line um, and it's so Buffy you so believe that coming from her um, so yeah, there's a lot of good Giles and Buffy moments in this episode. I think their interactions may be the highlight of the episode. Um, but Angel does show up again. He does get involved in the episode. And that's because he's kind of... I guess it's because of the apocalypse and the prophecy. Um, he does try and track Buffy down. And that naturally leads him to seeing her with Owen.
and Willow and Sander are all there as well, and they're trying to cover for Buffy. And um, what I, I do like, uh, um, not Owen, sorry, I like Angel in this episode. And the reason is, is because he's becoming more involved in the gang. You know, he's not this outsider. He's starting, and he's starting to be given a bit more to do rather than just be a bit stalkerish or just be this strange sort of outsider who Buffy has has an attraction to. You know, I, I think it works better if he's initiated in the gang. So obviously he's there sort of more in a group here and it is quite amusing seeing you know, um Angel being a bit jealous and they're at the bronze and it's obviously awkward because Angel shows up and Owen and Buffy are there on the date. Um, and um, Buffy says, you know, he's he's from we work together sort of thing, and um, yeah, there's all these sarc- sort of sarcastic lines from Xander as well about him being much older and and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, there's some good comedies and back and forth there. Um, and at one point when they hear about. Um, a demon sort of on on the loose who they suspect might be the anointed one they um, Xander and Willow go to the bronze and they they sort of masquerade as their dating sort of things to say hey why don't we go on a double date and all the while they're trying to give Buffy coded messages um, about a vampire at the at the um, morgue is and Giles is obviously there waiting. Um, so all that stuff is is enjoyable and nice character work, and it sort of leads to this this kind of um, fight scene at, at the morgue. But what happens is uh, Owen decides to follow, and this is. Another fourth side to his character is the fact that he he just finds all this stuff cool and he he likes the idea of hanging out in a morgue, in a cemetery, whatever you want to say. And yeah, it's just too convenient and just too forced the fact that he would happen to, to follow them and be into this idea. Um, and that he doesn't put him off Buffy. You know, most guys, most people would be freaked by it sort of thing. Um, yeah, so they're trying too hard with Owen and they're just throwing too many different character traits into his, into the mix, really, to make him seem convincing. Um, but anyway, the, the morgue scene is quite, quite good fun. Um... There's this visual, there's Giles hiding in, in one of the sort of like um, container sort of thing. Um, and, you know, Buffy catches up with him, but then the demon sort of pops out. Um, it, the vampire pops out and Buffy and him have, you know, quite quite a fun little smackdown, if you like, it, in the morgue and... There's lots of jumping about and using the sort of um, like containers, um, whatever you want to call them. And Owen obviously gets in the middle and that's kind of the first time he's sort of freaked out. And he's obviously, yeah, he doesn't know how to process it and he doesn't know what's happening with the demon. Um, Obviously, he doesn't know about vampires and that, so it's... He's thrown, he doesn't know what's going on. And and it's actually later, although he's thrown, Buffy sort of assumes that he wouldn't want to see her anymore because of last night. And actually, Owen, again, they're pushing this whole side of him too far, but he he's actually, oh, what a rush sort of thing. That was thrilling. Um, and he actually wants to keep seeing Buffy. And it's at that point she makes the crucial decision and actually says, um, it's not all right with me, you know, one night with me and you almost got killed. And 
and yeah she makes the decision and says we'll just be friends or we can still be friends and again that's a bit you sort of know you're not going to see this character again then he is just a one-off but again i think the important thing is what it does for buffy as a character i mean it's just the knowing could have been a better should have been a better character and the plot at times is too contrived but i think the important thing is what it does for buffy as a character and that stuff is all good you know she actually has this this wake up call and she actually realizes you know she can't be so casual about these things um and there's a really nice scene with Buffy and Giles at the end of, or near the end of the episode, where he gives her the first sort of pep talk. And, um, you know, he reassures her and gives her a bit of perspective, tells a story about when he first became a watcher and, you know, how he had other ambitions and what have you. And it's a nice moment. And Giles gives some really great pep talks to Buffy. Um, I think it's one of the character's great strengths and then he's he just has this wisdom and this level head and he just is so good at putting things into perspective and really making her feel secure again and it comes from a sincere place it's not just him like blowing smoke up her you know just to just to keep her on her game and that. I think it is from a sincere place and there is it rings true sort of thing what he says does actually make sense he's not just saying something where it might just be you know something to say it you know there is wisdom there there is logic to what he's saying so yeah really good scene for Gene, buffy and giles and again i think their interactions are the best thing from the episode So I guess that brings me on to the other side of the episode, which is the anointed one and his eventual arrival. And actually that that stuff is handled well as well, or at least the twist is handled well. I think there is some clunky moments getting there. So basically at one point we focus on the this bus coming into town and basically there's this raving almost like religious type nut or he's, he's raving about something like with religious sort of tones and causing a disturbance on this bus and it's almost like this this sort of red flag you know flagging him up then oh could this be the anointed one and yeah i think he's too obviously a red herring and he's actually the one who ends up being killed later and we actually he's the demon later or the vampire that shows up at the morgue and has the scene with Buffy so I guess that's a term where we see him later and he's obviously been killed on the bus um, and there's a crash that's called and the twist is because we see a little boy on the bus um, and Again, you're thrown off him because of the other guy yeah, who who you're meant to believe is the anointed one. And so the twist is at the end is the little kid, he walks in and he walks into the master's um, cave, is, is, is there, whatever you want to call it. And that is the anointed one, that is the twist. It was actually the kid on the bus. So... The twist was actually well handled. Um, now I have to say they don't do much with the anointed one moving forward. I'll obviously talk more about that coming up. And the actor is actually really bad. He's he's really terrible. He works fine in this episode because he doesn't really have anything to do. It's just about the twist with him at the end. But yeah, he's just this whiny little brat who doesn't really have any 
facial expressions of no or any presence to him he's he's a really bad actor and i think he's just used as this symbol as the anointed one but unlike the master he doesn't have any presence but anyway it, it's a nice twist for the episode and on the whole never never kill a boy on the first day is an enjoyable episode and there's some important character stuff for buffy and it's nice to see Angel involved a bit more as well, starting to have more scenes with the Scoobies, which I think is important. And it's sort of one of those episodes that I kind of can watch a lot just because it is quite an easy watch. It's very watchable. And yeah, the own stuff is bad, but it doesn't take away from it too much. But yeah solid enough episode it's again one of those where in a stronger season i think it would be a higher episode or also it would be a lower episode a lower grade episode but i think because this is not a great season of buffy um you know they're still finding their feet at this stage then i think it is at least a mid-ground episode this season it's at least solid sort of thing it's certainly not as bad as some of them and yeah there are some others that are better but it's pretty decent so i'd give it three stars again which is about the average for this season so far anyway so that is buffy episode five of the first season never kill a boy on the first date so please comment below assuming you've seen the episode what did you think of it what did you think of owen is there a defense for him does the character actually work for you why your favorite scenes favorite lines anything and what do you think of the anointed one and how the plot is progressing this season so yeah, as I said, never kill a boy on the first date, and I will be back with episode 6 review soon, and that is of the pack. And that's an episode which really divides people, a very interesting first season episode. So the pack to come, but like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and good night.